I'd like to end this video by giving a very brief one minute lesson on one of the most profound ideas that links group theory to physics, and that is Noether's theorem. This theorem was formulated by the German mathematician Emmy Noether around 100 years ago. It states that for any continuous symmetry that you can find in a theory, there will always be a corresponding conserved quantity. For example, you may have learned about the conservation of momentum or energy. These correspond to the fact that isolated systems will be symmetric under spatial translations and time translations, which means the laws of physics won't change if you move your experiment somewhere else in space or to another moment in time. Another conserved quantity you might have encountered is angular momentum, which occurs in systems that are symmetric under rotational invariance, like the gravitational field of a star or black hole. Admittedly, these are just a few simple examples, but this line of thinking permeates almost all of modern theoretical physics. Whether the objects of study are fundamental particles or the Lagrangian of a quantum field theory or string theory, one of the first line of questions a theoretical physicist pursues is to ask, what are the symmetries of my theory? This question then naturally leads to the discovery of some sort of group that encodes all of the symmetries, and consequently, some conserved quantity. Arguably, a theoretical physicist has no other task than that of discovering these symmetries.